Hey guys, Scanner Danner here. Uh, don't have my son Caleb with me using an old camera too. So this is only 1080, not 4K. But uh, what I'm doing today is a locking hub conversion on a four-wheel drive, full-time four-wheel drive, 1978 Dodge W150. This thing's a mutt. It has stuff from every different truck you can possibly imagine. Frames from one state, bodies from another. Axles are from a W200. Engine's a 413 wedge out of something. Transmission's out of something. The transfer case that I have in this is already a part-time transfer case. It's an NP208, not the factory NP203. So, let's get started. This is my friend Brent, and we know each other from Tin Grill. Wait, Tin Grill Dodge Trucks Facebook page. So I met this guy. He's a wealth of information. I recognize it right off the bat, and I found this 91 uh, three-quarter ton Dodge front axle and rear axle out of a Chevy, we think. Looks like a 14 bolt out of a I, Chevy. Yeah. So, And I, I asked for compatibility from this guy on the Tin Grill page, and he's like, hey, if you don't want it, that rear diff, you know, I'm interested, and so that's where we're at. We met. He's two and a half hours to South. the west. I'm two and a half hours from the east, and and uh, we met here in the middle. He gets one diff, I get the other, so it's perfect. And we're gonna set this up on my '77 with this guy's expertise, because I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm completely out of my normal comfort zone of what I do, but I'm sure with the Tin Grill Group's help, and this guy will be able to handle this. What we're trying to do is, like, say his his short bed half ton has a set of '77 W200 axles underneath of it, which for those of you in the know. No, that was an MP203, the old live spindle design. So we now have all of the goodies here to do the knuckle outboard swap on this truck. This is out of a 91, which is a center axle disconnect, which has the weird sliding collar and all that jazz. But the thing is, all Paul here needs is from the knuckles outboard. So this, for the right price, yes. gets him all the pieces, parts, and bits that he needs a whole lot cheaper than trying to scrounge a knuckle here and a stub shaft there and a set of locking hubs and all of that Absolutely. jazz. Absolutely. So, so can you can you tell me briefly this is what you got called the CAD design? Yes. I'm trying to remember exactly. I think the center axle disconnect appeared in eighty six or eighty seven. That was what allowed well, we still have locking ship. hubs. What's well, the point? Somebody has added the locking hubs in. So those weren't on the original Correct. CAD design did not have actually locking had hubs. a push in dust cap uh, that went on in place of those mile marker hubs. So you end up with yes. basically full time hubs on the outboard end. So yeah, I really Paul, I really good agree. luck, sir. Yeah. You've got a project ahead of you. That's okay though. I can take my time and I can drive it. You there know, you go. I just rebuilt the front end of it and I'm wasting some money, but that's okay. I, that's I'll all get right. this set up and and then we can figure out exactly what will transfer between the full time and the part time outer outer ends and know for sure yep. if the brake rotors will transfer. Will. You know that stuff. This is going to be the one way we'll know for sure. We'll know for what sure. transfers. Yep, that's correct. I ordered tie rod ends for the '91, which I was told the threads are different. Uh, we will see when I pull them off of my 78. Okay. If you guys are wondering what I'm using, this is actually an outer tie rod socket. It's a specific socket meant for doing exactly what I just did. Just makes life easy. Nothing like red wrench. Like butter, like butter. All right, let's see if we can pry this caliper off. I'm not using that caliper. Holy crap. Just hoping I don't have to do anything as far as buying hub parts. So look at the U-joint here, the axle. So that's not, not spinning right now. And then that is in the free mode. Let me lock it with the hub. Let's see if it locks. Yes, it does. Yeah, this thing has seen better days. So something's locked up in the, in the differential. I don't care, but you can see how I can can't really move the rotor anymore and you see the 
U joint being moved. I go back to free. <clears throat> cool. So that hub is functional. You have to take the hub apart first before you can uh, do the ball joints because you can't get to the ball joints with the axle in the way. And the ball joints, of course, are being separated because I need the steering knuckle. There's going to be an O-ring around this that's going to be really probably dry and makes this difficult to come out. So I just want to get a real small screwdriver and try to gently pry. I don't want to beat on this. All right, this would be a, a time where, you know, tapping on something helps, but it's a rubber O-ring that sits on this that's holding that. And it's probably been there forever. Yep. Nice and easy. Okay, let's keep going. All right, the next stuff, guys, is some snap rings. And uh, there's a few in here. I think there's three, maybe four. Um, but the outer one first, this piece here. I really no particular order. All right, this is spring-loaded behind it. That guy. All of this is going into a tray so I don't lose it. This is for the inside piece that attaches to the drive shaft or the axle. Next one is going to be this guy. Use a little pick. Go in between here and you'll feel it. There's your gap there. There's your gap there. So we're going to pull this one out. All right, once you get this outer snap ring out, clean up your threads if you got any debris in there because this is all going to slide out together. This gear that's sitting here and this outer part come out together. So it's gonna slide here. So a little bit of penetrating oil on stuff is helpful, which I already hit it. I'll hit it again. There, and then around here. Sometimes I'll just pull right out, depends. It's just a little pick, you see the movement in that. But if it's being stubborn, maybe we can work a little bit smarter. Use your bolts, use two of them. Just kind of help you walk it out. All right, back and forth while you're pulling. All right, there you go. Look at that. You see the debris that's in here. It's really bad. All right, next up we have two locking mechanisms, two locking nuts. I have a socket for that. All right, there's your socket. It's like 20 bucks at Napa. I bought it for this, because I didn't have one. So you see the design. This is your outer lock ring. These aren't, these aren't super tight. Not like the straight cut bearing in, in the full-time uh, four-wheel drive axle. That was it. I didn't really hit that very hard at all. You can almost do these Without a socket, they're not that tight, but you can't really get a chisel in there at the right angle. So we have one outer. Next we have a kind of lock ring. I hope this camera angle, I hope this is showing. See your, your lock ring, All right? It's got a tab for the splines and then that's gonna sit on the little tit on the inside piece. Pull that out and show you. This is your inside one that puts your preload on your bearing. These do not get to tight, tighten very much at all. We'll get some specs for you guys. We'll go back together. Some of you guys want to know this kind of stuff. Like what is the spec of that? Let's just see if I'll keep my hands in the shot. Try to. Let me back up just a little bit. You see the effort. I'm, I know I'm using a really big ratchet, but I'm just going to use my hand up here just to show you. Like that was not very tight at all. Just a couple foot pounds. Just enough to take the play out. Having this socket was clutch. I wouldn't do this job without this socket. You'd be fighting it all day long. So you guys see right where my index finger is, see that little tab on top? Right, that's what this piece goes on and locks it into place. So this gets locked to the spindle and then that little uh tab goes on that and then you lock it down with your outer nut so 
Don't mix those up. That's your inside one. This is the whole assembly, so come off. All right, there's your whole oh, the outer bearing just fell out. We'll get a close up of that in a minute. We're working on this 91 axle compared to my 78. Everything is standard on that 78 and everything is metric on this guy. And this is where I need one of my boys to hold this still for me. Now my preference would not be to use an impact here. Not because I don't want to mess these studs up, but I don't really have a choice right now. I'm just going to work them back and forth a little bit. I don't want to mess these up. I mean, I'm sure you can change these studs. I don't want to. Take your time, stuff like this. It makes for uh, it makes for easier work later. Uh oh, that one's spinning. Not cool. Not cool. Nice. So that's that's the key there. I put pressure behind it. And I was pulling out on the backing plate a little bit to put pressure on that nut. There's no threads left at all. I've had some issues with this in the past for where we are, and uh, I actually watched a couple of YouTube videos. I'll put a link to the guy that I watched do this. What he did is he put the nut on, and he used a two-jaw puller. And I have one. I have a two-jaw. I just don't know if it'll work yet. Two-jaw puller here, push here, which is going to give you some, some pressure this way. And then we can tap on this to aid in that process and pull this out. So it's just rust that holds you up here. And this is the part as the DIYer at home, man, you are going to be working hard here. Because um, you're going to try to put a chisel in here and there's not going to be room to get it in there. And that's where some hitting on the side. And I've done this many times on these, not with this kind of hammer, but you can hit in here and in here back and forth up here down here don't hit where the bearing rides the center part you can booger it up as much as you want but you don't want to do this i don't know if you can see that you see where you see where it's already mushroomed right there so the race of that bearing needs to rest against that and uh with that mushroom there you want to clean that up i'll, I'll get a little dremel and clean that little mushroom up we don't want that part mushroomed down but I want to try this two jaw trick, see if it works. I'm afraid of putting too much pressure and like messing up my spindle. So I'll put some on it. And then what I want to do, I just want to get, just want to vib vibrate the housing. I thought I heard a couple of cracks as I walked away. It's kind of telling me that that's already moving. This, this, I have to be honest, this makes me nervous. But, you know, I just don't know what kind of pressure that I can put on this. You know, is there any concern inside? Because I'm pushing in on that axle. Be curious to hear your thoughts. It looks like I have a gap here now. Let me get you guys a better shot. So watch that gap right there. We'll spray it a little bit too. I know some of you guys are thinking heat. I gotta be honest with you, I heated the other side. I heated the, the steering knuckle itself and I just don't know that that's all that wise to do on a steering component. And so I'm not gonna show it. I am not an expert. This is not my area of expertise, guys. I'm just showing this process because I know enough to help my Dodge Power Wagon friends. That's the purpose of this video. Oh yeah, she's coming. She's moving now. Can I pull harder with this pulley without hurting, hurting the threads on the spindle? 
without hurting anything in the differential. Now, I don't care about this differential, so these are questions that we can answer in the comments from the rest of you guys. That's coming. I like this. This is helping. I guess my suggestion is maybe don't be too aggressive with it. We'll clean up any chisel marks too. Did we get this off? There it is. Wow, look at that. All that crap in there. Didn't do any damage to the threads. Happy about that. I didn't damage the nut at all. So we didn't hurt the spindle. I have a new bearing for this inside. I'll show you guys how to put that spindle bearing into it. I can't even see it right now. And we have this part. We have new gaskets that are gonna go here. There's three of them actually. Two seals and then there's like a fiber type washer right here. That's all gonna get replaced. All right, so pull the axle. And this is the part I need. Now we can take the ball joints, separate those. Look how tight that is. <laughs> oh, those are studs. You can see the stud on the other side. It's got a cutout for where the axle comes through. So it's just a stud. And I'm sure back in the day, it was a very common part. You probably get them, you probably stocked them. <laughs> Not the case probably these days. But I'll see if I can get one. All right, I'm gonna be doing wheel bearings too. Wheel bearings are gonna get replaced. Rotor's gonna get replaced. So, given that, so to change the rotor, you gotta pound these studs out. I have all new studs too, so I'm not trying to save these at all. Just smack them hard. Don't miss. Get this all cleaned up too and then we'll pound these races out as well which that's really no big deal we can use this do it right now chisel on the inside angled that was the bearing and seal that just came out inner bearing seal and now I gotta grab that race. All right, so as you can see, this has been through hell. <laughs> a 3 8 extension is pounded on a, a center punch that got bent and used over the year. This has been my tool of choice for like inner races. Inner race is out. Uh, inner race. Outer race, same thing, backwards. You'll find the lip on it, you feel it. There's your other race. Okay. So we're gonna use this assembly, get this all cleaned up, put new bearings in it. Okay, my friends. Time to laugh at me doing ball joints now. So sometimes when I get real rusty cotter pins like this, I have been known to just pound the, the cotter pin in there and there, get your socket on there and just freaking spin it off. Especially when you're changing the ball joint. Sometimes that can bite you in the ass because then it ends up spinning this inside. So, that was piece of cake. Don't fight the cotter pin on an old ball joint or tie rod when you're changing it. Just spin it off. It's soft metal and it'll just, you know, you're not using the nut anyway. It's still in there. Okay? Sometimes it works that way. Sometimes, when you get bit by that, would be when you have it maybe separated already 
and the taper is loose and then when you try to spin it it just spins the whole thing and then then you have a problem but that was worth the risk They're still tapered and they're pressed into the knuckle. So we just want to smack on it here, smack on it here, and smack on it here. Okay? Okay? There. And there. There, that's it. We're out. There's your steering knuckle right there. Cool? Now we'll press these, press these ball joints out. What I've done in the past on these really is you just beat them out, press them in. We'll see if we can win that way. You know, the other thing I didn't think of, it should be okay though, is when I ordered parts, I talked about the tie rod ends um, potentially having different threads. That's why we want to maybe change the bar too. But when I ordered ball joints, I ordered ball joints for a 91, which is what this uh, steering knuckle is off of. This axle is off of a 91. And I'm just assuming the 91 axle is gonna have the same ball joint taper and length as the 78 because I ordered 91 ball joints. I'll be pressing 91 ball joints, steering knuckle, into a 78 housing. Now we, we're about to find out. All right, so the conversion, what are we doing? We're changing the outer axle shaft, right? U-joint out, we're changing the hub, changing the spindle, changing the steering knuckle. And then of course the rotor's different. It's laying up there, right? Rotor's different, that rotor's different. Backing plate's different. This is, these are your main components. You wanna do a locking hub conversion on your full-time four-wheel drive Dodge truck W150. Mine's a 78. This is, just, this is your setup. These are the parts you need. I don't need the back half axle. I don't need that part. Just the front. U joints the same from what I looked up. When you're looking for an axle, this was a lot of the, the thing that I was going through when I was searching, like what can I do, you know, to match a whole axle? There's, there's guys that say, well, I'll just throw the whole axle in. Okay, well you can do that, but are you gonna throw a, an axle in that has old wheel bearings, old ball joints, old tie rods, old rotor? No, especially when you're, you know, doing stuff like like I'm doing on my truck. Like, this is a nice truck. I'm not doing that. I'm changing all those parts anyway. So that's number one. Uh, number two is that if you're gonna match up the whole axle, you have to get the right gear ratio. And for me, I didn't have to worry about it. I just needed to make sure that I was dealing with an eight lug and I needed to make sure that it had hubs. And then from that point, it didn't matter what was inside of it. Didn't matter the year, didn't matter any of that. Um, then I was able to use this as donor parts and put locking hubs on my truck. And like I told you guys, I already have the NP208 transfer case. So the NP208, which, you know, I'm learning all these numbers. I didn't know any of this stuff till I started here. The 203 is the is the full-time full four-wheel drive. The NP208 is the part-time and the shift pattern's different. The 208, two-wheel drive high is all the way forward. But on the 203, low lock is all the way forward. And so, my shifter inside my truck is for the 203. It says low lock, low, neutral, high, and high lock. And so I pull it all the way back, not realizing for the 208, you're putting it in low, but I thought I was in high. I went for a test drive. I couldn't go over 15 miles per hour. And I'm like, why can't I go over 15? For that initial test drive, I had all kind of stuff wrong still with it. So I only went like a half a mile. I never bothered putting it in low lock or low to see and then I posted on my uh, tin grill page on Facebook uh, where a lot of my friends are and, and they told me, hey, you know, you have a 208, that's why. And the shift pattern's opposite. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Awesome and sucky because I just rebuilt my entire front diff, full-time four-wheel drive, new rotor, new wheel bearings, caliper and all, all that stuff, U-joint. Uh, but the nice thing is I can reuse the U-joint, I can reuse the caliper, um, and then the rest of it's different. So 
anyway that's what I'm doing well wow, that's rather unfortunate I just did the ball joints I smacked the top one out used the press for the bottom one and uh, totally forgot to hit record all right it is the next day on to the u-joint we're gonna use this outer stub shaft if you want to call it the outer part of this there is a ring on this one that was not on the other side the other side I did off camera uh, this ring was missing but uh, that comes in a kit I got this actually off of Amazon I don't normally like to buy car parts off Amazon but I had a friend of mine his name's Jamie he told me about this it's the SBK1 he said to buy that kit that'll fit this uh, Dana 44 and in the kit it comes with the dust seals and then the new inner spindle bearing I'll show you guys that and then you know you got a new ring right here so that's where that goes the other side it was missing i could see these getting loose coming off rattling being annoying um but you we could tap that off that should just pop right off okay inside c clips They're just breaking apart. Look at that piece of it. This is so rusty. All right, multiple ways to do U-joints. I'm just gonna use the support here and here, and I'm gonna smack on this right here. Normally you don't have to hit them with that much force. This one was just so badly rusted and broken apart. And I'm not worried about this side, I'm not using that. I wasn't worried about damaging it by hitting it. Some of the drive shafts you, you can damage if you miss and like hit the tube, you know, if it's a hollow tube. But what I did in the method I used is I mushroomed the end of that a little bit and so when I put that new ring back on, this isn't really a huge deal, but when I put this, this ring back on, that's going to end up hitting on that. So I just want to grind that down a little bit with my grinder. Same way on this side. That's really the only damage that I did. Use a press if you like. As far as removal goes on new joints, I've never used a press, especially on this style. So my friend taught me this, and I don't have, this isn't really done right. You take a piece of like all thread, and then put a, put a slit in the middle, and I should have made that deeper. And then a piece of emery cloth in there, and then we're gonna use that to go in here. And I really, this is worn out emery cloth. I need some new stuff, and I don't have it, so. This may not work all that well. I mean, I, I've done this with a, a Dremel and a, and a stone, but like you, you can easily take too much material off. And this way it's kind of a little bit more gentle. Oh wow, that's grooved really bad. You see the, see how this one is? That one's beat up a little bit too where that inner spindle bearing would ride. Look how grooved that is. Look at that. Oh, damn. Back in the day, we'd have sleeves that you could, you could actually sleeve a crank pulley when the seal would cut into the pulley. I wonder if that's a possibility here. This is the bearing that's gonna sit there inside the spindle. Yeah, man. Yeah, this is not going to work. See how this one fits. See how much slop is in it. I'm pushing like this way and this way. You know, there's, there's a little bit there on that one. It's just more of a guide bearing. There's, there isn't really much load there. If any at all. But I'm comfortable with that one. I am not with this one 
So I'm about ready to post to my tin grill page on this. After I cleaned it up, you see how bad that is. Yeah, ignore my hammer mark there. That's fixable, but it doesn't even matter at this point. This, this is garbage. So then I looked at the spindle <clears throat> inside to see what it looked like. And, uh, yeah, what's left of the bearing. You see the outer housing of the bearing still there. So we should be okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a Dremel and I'm going to cut a slit in there. And then we're going to pop all this out. That's the way I did the other side. I just want to be careful we don't go down too deep. You put a little score in the housing, it's not a big deal. Because that inside or outside part, um, that doesn't spin. That stays stationary. So you have some leeway. Just be just be careful. I just found that, you know, I don't have the puller to pull these out and cutting it with a drum will work perfectly. So that's exactly what I'm going to do with this. And then we'll just really kind of clean this up and see. But I think we're going to be okay with the with the spindle. Although you, you, you have an issue here too um, where we have a groove in this area. I think this is okay. Uh, let's cut. Let's do this. And then um, I'll dig for some parts. Take the inner, inner stuff out first. Then I can see that that inner race a lot better. Yeah, I know this camera angle isn't the greatest. At this point, you can hit it down further, it's gonna stop and then you should be able to pry it you know, we're kind of damaging it on pur on purpose, is what we're doing. I, I read some some posts of guys that were really, really struggling with this thing. Damaging it is the name of the game here. Oh, I'll take it out in pieces. I don't care. There's your old bearing, and I'll show you the inside of this. Let me clean this up. See the shiny part? Just a tiny little nick. That is no harm, no foul right there, people. Remember that part, that inner race is stationary there. It never moves. So a little nick on the inside is not a problem. That sure as hell beats trying to fight that thing out of there. Dremel's the way to go. I think we'll be okay on the spindle. Okay, now that should be, if I clean that up, I think I'm okay with that. There is a little bit of a groove there, but nothing to make that unusable for just being a grease seal. Now, if that was like an oil seal for an engine, like on a crankshaft pulley, that would need to maybe be sleeved. But it being a grease seal, I think I'm going to be okay with that. I just got to find myself a stub shaft, axle shaft, outer axle, whatever you want to call it. Let's put that spindle bearing in later. I'll clean that up some more. I'll show you guys that too. Taking it out is the biggest part. Putting it in is easy. Dremel for the win. So you guys saw the issue I had with the stub axle, the stub shaft, uh, the outer axle. And I posted on one of my favorite uh, Facebook groups, the Tin Grill group. Just needed some help. I, I wanted, uh, you know, I needed a part. And uh, all these guys stepped up. There's three three guys said they had it. And another guy helped me look, look up the part numbers online. I was going to buy new. I could get a new one for $151 from Rock Auto uh, with like $10 shipping and like $10 tax. So it was like $170 for a stub shaft. That would be one. And uh, I, I just want to, I'm going to mention the 10 grill group, number one. And then number two, um, I want to 
um, say a specific thank you uh, to Chris, and hope I'm pronouncing your last name right, Chris Pearson Jr. Um, you were the first one to answer that you had some. You and I have been communicating back and forth via Messenger, and it turns out uh, Chris was a trainer too for a period of time, knows some of the people that I know, and he knows who Scanner Danner is, <laughs> which is really awesome. And he, he, he's like, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll you know, we, we talked about a number, but he's like, send me a book, and, and they're yours, and I'm like, no, I'm still paying you, and I'll send you a book. So special thanks to Chris. I mean it. I, I just can't thank you enough. It was cool to meet you in this way. I'm actually talking to you right now as we're as I'm filming this. And special thanks to the Tin Grill group. You you guys are awesome. I love being here and I hope that when I produce this video that it will be helpful for others. We're going to talk about some variables here uh, with the grooves in the splines for this Dana 44 stub shaft here in a few. So um Chris is going to ship these out for me tomorrow, and uh, then we'll get them installed and we'll talk about it. So, yeah, awesome stuff.